Hi, I'm David P. Griffin. I'm responding to a lot of emails and concerns my friends have about a lawsuit I filed against my former employer, Public Access Television, here in Austin, Texas. Well, this video is how you do a lawsuit against your former employer. It's really quite simple. First, work it out. Try to do everything you can to make your former employer understand that these are last resorts and you really want them to try to work out their differences. In my case, I was totally ignored for six months. Their attitude was, if we ignore it, it'll just go away. Well, once again, they just made the wrong choice and why am I surprised? That's why I'm suing them in the first place. They've made nothing but wrong choices. So once you've tried to work it out and you decided that you're gonna do pro se, which in legal terms mean I'm gonna represent myself, Pro se is the term used in the legal community for representing yourself. This is perfectly legal. You can look it up on Wikipedia and any other of the legal um, websites and they'll explain to you what that term means. I'm going to be using several legal terms and I basically learned them through the internet. There's multiple ways you can learn people. Uh, when I first started in photography I wasn't that good but I got better the more I did it. Well, the more I get into the legal community, the better I'm going to get it, just like you will. It will take some time, it will take some effort, and it does get expensive. But if you qualify, the courts here will either let you uh, pay it out by month over a six-month period. You also can get it um, waived if you read the right criteria. Uh, in my case, being un unemployment and everything else, uh, I qualified. The, I am not paying any filing fees, but if you did, a filing fee here in Travis County is $230, another $140 to have service, which means a constable or a law officer will take the lawsuit to your former employer and serve it. Um, serving is part of the process and you have to pay for that. And believe me, you have to pay for everything. Nothing's really free in this world. But if you qualify and they will waive the charges, that's great. Um, first thing you have to do is draw up a complaint. The complaint is basically a document that looks just like this. You've seen them a hundred times on court TV. You know, you have to put your case and cause number here, who you're suing, the county and the court, and then all this legal jargon. Well, that all that legal jargon is what we're here to talk about today. There's many ways to do research on the internet and there's many ways to find the information you need. Uh, personally, Look through the newspaper and through the internet for other lawsuits that have been filed in your area that are similar to yours and the same people and the same laws apply. That's a good way to get started. Once you know the lawyers' names or the parties involved, then you go down to the local courthouse and you pull up the actual lawsuit like I have. You can actually go down and find a lawsuit filed against someone for doing the same thing that's done with you, against you that's already there, already existing. It'll already have the pertinent information that you're looking for. That's one way to find it. You need to study the rules of evidence and several other documents so you can also find this information. It just depends on how you want to do it. Next thing you have to do is know who you're suing. I mean, not just know, I mean, know their name, know their address, their phone number, their social security number, their date of birth, all the information you possibly contain because the courts you have to identify people and you have to be specific and you can't make it up as you go. Uh, once again, if you go online and there are certain uh, companies that will do uh, searches for you, um, Google is one, um, there's Dun & Bradstreet, and they've got a lot of good information. Now you're going to have to pay for this and that's just part of the business. Doing legal work, even doing it yourself, is expensive and that's just part of the life. So once you've done your research and you have to have a word processing program that anybody can make this pattern, this pattern, this format is the legal pattern. You have to have it in these terms and you know, no big deal. You can download it if you've ever typed, you shouldn't have any problem. So once you know the name of the people and you know exactly the information that's required as far as their name and address, then you have to have the parties and that is the parties that's the name and the address the next thing you need to do is make sure you know your jurisdiction and your venue these two items are very important that means you have to know where this happened you know you have to be in Travis County they have to be in Travis County 
you know that's the jurisdiction of the courts and of the county and now if one is in a different county or a different state that makes it much more difficult because then venue is very important because if the party was injured somewhere else and you can't you know sue them at home you have to go to where the injury occurred or wherever the damage or whatever happened uh, my personal case, I was here in Austin, Texas, the Public Access Center. Uh, I live here in Travis County. They live here in Travis County. Everything happens in Travis County. So the venue is definitely Travis County. There's no question there, and that's something you want to make sure of. Next part of any lawsuit is the facts. You have to know the facts. You have to be factual. You know, once you have the facts, and that is date, time, I saw so-and-so do this, you know, it can't be hearsay, it can't be I was told, or I was led to believe, or someone told me. No, this is facts. Facts is what you saw, what you know personally, what you can prove. And believe me, in any lawsuit, you need to prove your facts. You need to be able to be accurate. So, state the facts. A paragraph per fact, eight, ten facts of the case, whatever necessary to prove your point. Uh, you don't want to give them everything because that's what trial and discovery is for. You just want to make sure the judge can look at this, understand what's going on, what laws will apply, and why he should hear this, and why he's not going to just file and dismiss it. Now remember, they're going to try to dismiss you at any time, every chance they can. That's their job. They have lawyers. They have spent their whole life doing this. You're just starting out probably the first time. So remember, you're going to get knocked down, but you got to get back up. That's just life. I don't have a problem with that. Eh, you know, what, what do you have to lose anyway, huh, people? You're already out of work. You probably, the only reason you're suing them is because you don't have anything else to do. Hey, I had six months of research, learn, and I've done films and documentaries all my life, so this was just another project. Hey, you know, it could be a new business for me. I'm not a litigator, but they make a lot of money, and I'll be honest with you, you know, before I started this, I contacted over 200 attorneys here in the Austin area by mail, by letter, by voice. It all boiled down to four or five attorneys who all wanted thousands of dollars just to shake their hand. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay thousands of dollars to interview someone I may or may not want to hire to work for me. That's just ridiculous and it's just not going to happen. Pro se is for me. Um, I'm sure I'm going to lose and get beat up, but you know, I'm going to keep coming back and coming back and coming back because when you do something like this, you have to have a determination and you have to have a cause and a reason. And my cause and reason, I was personally insulted. You know, anybody can get fired and in the state of Texas, you can be fired for anything and that's fine. But the fact is, you know, when you, you kick the old dog when he's leaving the door, he's liable to turn around and bite you in the ass. And that's exactly what's going on. I was personally insulted. And that's something that nobody does. I'm sorry, I just don't get insulted. But back to the lawsuit. So now that you have your facts and you've always stated that, you have to always end with a settlement. Because the part of a lawsuit and the judge wants to hear, he wants to hear, like I said, where the venue is, what the uh, law is you're quoting, what the facts of the case are, and then what's the remedy, what is the outcome. And that's called the prayer. You want to pray for damages, and you want all the money you can. It's hard to state damages sometime, and if you have physical damages and costs, then yes, state them. But your uh, demand for damages and your prayer, the prayer basically states in most legal terms that you want as much money as possible for all the damages allowed by the court. Uh, and that's what you want to do. They will set a figure. Now the bottom line is 99% of the time you're going to settle out of court and you won't have to go through this. But there's a good chance you will. So we're going to discuss the next phase. Now we just talked about filing a petition, going to court, and what it will cost and take. Uh, there's more details on the website and I'll be happy to sit down with anybody and discuss this personally if that opportunity occurs. The next uh, part of the um, process, because this is a very long and expensive process, is going to be called discovery. Because what's going to happen is you're going to file your petition. The court is going to send it to them and they have to, quote, answer. And the answer can simply be, we deny everything and prove it. Uh, they can take every uh, chapter or every uh, paragraph apart and try to dismiss it. Uh, believe me, they're going to try to dismiss it every chance and every opportunity. 
that's just the way the game is and you have to learn that you can stand up and say no that's not right no that's not accurate but you have to know that's not accurate to say that so that's why it's so important to read the rules and understand 